This is Michael Halper with Sales Scripter, and the topic today is how I generated 50,000 leads. And to be a little bit more specific, what I'm going to talk about is how I got 50,000 website visitors to opt into my email list. That was a bit long for the title, so I shortened it, but I just wanna make sure that you know what we're gonna talk about here today. And really, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through seven different things that helped me to build up that email list. Depending on your business, some of these might not make any sense for you to do, but I'm fairly confident that there'll be a few of these that either you can improve or get ideas from. The other thing is, is that I'm not claiming to be an expert in any of these seven areas, and by no means have we done things perfectly in these areas, but these are seven different areas that we've invested time and effort in and have had somewhat success. So let's just go through each of these really quickly. The first one is that it all started with creating content. And what I mean by that, let me actually flip over to my website. All right, so here I'm on the website Sales Scripter and I'm on our blog, and this is where we've created a lot of content. And I just wanna show you that, because if you scroll down on this left side, you can see archives here. And these are the different archives of our different blog posts. And I just wanna go down to the bottom, because you'll see that there's blog posts that actually go back to September, 2012. That's interesting for one point because we did not launch our first product until 2013. I was actually focused on creating content before our product was even launched. And the reason for that is that at that time, and things have changed, but at that time, Google really placed a lot of value on websites that had a lot of content. The logic that they used then, and it still might apply today, by the way, I am no means a Google SEO expert, but the logic back then was that Google wanted to send traffic to subject matter experts. When someone types in a keyword search, what Google wants to do is Google wants to provide the best, most informative results for those that search result. So with that, what they would do is they would rank websites that had a lot of content higher than others because they would make the assumption that, well, if this site has a lot of blog posts on a particular keyword topic, then they must be a subject matter expert. So let's send traffic to them. So I played into this. And so since day one, I've been creating content and blog posts related to sales scripts. That's a keyword that I've developed content on. So since day one, I've been creating a lot of content. Now, let me give you some tips for how you might want to create some content for your business or your website. Here are a few rules, and by no means am I a content creation expert. But the first rule that I would give for you is make sure the content you create provides some sort of value. So instead of being a taker, try to be a giver with the content you create. A taker would be someone who tries to take something. So when you create content about your product and you're trying to close the sale and essentially take someone's money and give them your product, that's being a taker. The opposite of that to be a giver would be to try to help the person that you're writing that for. So here are some different ways to help that person. You could certainly provide helpful tips. So a blog post on seven ways to do this or seven tips for that is a way to help. You could also try to inform, and this could be slightly different from tips, because you could inform someone on trends or statistics or research without providing helpful tips. So you could inform them. You could also entertain them. You could create a video or a blog post or a picture that's entertaining and funny that has no real helpful tips in it or in helpful information, but you're helping the person that reads that by making them laugh. So provide value with the content you create. The next thing is, is don't talk about your product in your content. So certainly if you have a blog with hundreds of blog posts, some of those could be about your product or new releases or news and events about your company. That's okay. But the bulk of the content you create should be related to number one, which is being helpful. So minimize how much you talk about your product. The next thing is to align the content you create with targeted keywords related to your product or related to your business. Out of the gate, you just want to be creating as much content as you can, but 
the more you align that content with keywords can help you because for example, as you're creating content, if Google starts to scan your site and realize that you're a subject matter expert in a particular area, you want them to start to pick up and associate your expertise with keywords that are related to the product you sell so that they can send you targeted traffic. That's basically what happened with me is, is that I created targeted keywords related to sales scripts, cold call scripts, cold calling, selling, and then Google started sending me traffic related to those targeted keywords. The next thing is, of course, if you're creating content, it's going to be on your website. That's what we did at the beginning. But then you want to distribute that content through different channels, such as email blasts, as well as posting on different social media platforms. I want to go back to the concept of creating targeted keywords. Here is a tool that I used, I've used all along. This is a Google AdWords keyword planner. This tool is tremendously helpful in getting data on keywords. So you can run all sorts of search searches on keywords related to your product, service, or business. And Google will show you how often that's being searched what the level of competition is for those keywords. So this is what, I use this tool to create the, our basically list of keywords that I started creating content on very early on. And uh, this is free and it's something you should try to use. Now, a lot of the content that I created was in the form of blog posts. So I'm gonna give you some blog post guidelines that I used earlier on. I think that in an earlier Google algorithm, these probably aligned better with what Google was doing. I'm not an expert. I know that their algorithm has changed. I still create blog posts with these guidelines, but I don't know if these really align with Google today. But each blog post I created, I would try to create between 500 to 1,000 words. And then you want the keyword for that blog post, of course, in the title, but in the actual blog post, you want it 1% of the time. So if you're writing a 500 word blog post, you want the keyword in there five times. Now there's three places at a minimum that you want keywords for that article or blog post. You want it in the first sentence, and then you want it a second time in the first 200 words, and then you want that keyword in the last sentence. And then I would recommend you hyperlink the, the keyword for that blog post three times and hyperlink to other pages on your blog or wherever. But when you hyperlink, that can help tell Google that this is a keyword in this particular blog post. So I would actually hyperlink the first sentence, the last sentence, and the second keyword when I was creating blog posts. Just some tips there. That's what we do. Not saying that that's the uh, recommended advice in today's day and age. But again, this is this these seven steps. This is what we've done and take from this whatever is helpful to you and your business. The next one is organic SEO. So as I was creating that content, Google started to become aware of who we are and started to send us traffic. Before we even launched our product, Google was actually sending traffic to salescriptor.com. So in our first six months, we were starting to rank on keywords. So this is just a report that I grabbed from our Google Analytics for the past month. And so as you can see, Google sent us uh, organic traffic of 15,000 new users th this past month. That's actually down, you know, and that might be a result of me not keeping up with the Google algorithm changes. But at its high, we were getting about 30,000 uh, visitors a, a month from Google. So it's a bit down. Now, one thing I'm not going to talk about here today is pay-per-click advertising. All of our growth and all, everything we've done here today has, that I'm going to show you here today is uh, all organic. So this is all free traffic. And um, I've done a few paid ads uh, campaigns from time to time. I'll look, turn those on for two or three months. But you know, the numbers are so small and it's, and it's expensive and we get so much traffic for free that we've never used that too much. But the content that we created helped to fuel the, all this traffic from Google. And then what I realized was, well, I have all this traffic coming to my website. These are all great leads. And I need a way to be able to capture their these visitors, capture their information, and then be able to add these website visitors to my sales funnel. And the way that I started to do that was I thought, okay, let me create some eBooks. So this wasn't real difficult at this particular time because when I started to work on this, I had already created all these blog posts. So I had all this content and basically I took stuff that was already written and turned it into eBooks. There was still some work there, but it wasn't too major. 
And let me actually go back to our website to show you something real quick regarding the eBooks. So our, our eBooks are certainly on our website. So you can you can actually download these by entering your name and email address. What I actually did very, very early on was I added on this sidebar here a, an opt-in form for our eBooks. And it was a little image and it said, get our do's and don'ts eBook uh, prospecting doesn't have to be difficult and all they had to do is enter their information in that form and then they would get an email with our ebook. I put that there with a bit of optimism because it would show up on e almost every page of our website. And here I had 30,000 people coming in from Google and they would most of them would see that because it was almost on every page. Now, I was a bit disappointed in those results because what I would get is, you know, I would probably get one or two opt-ins a day, probably one on average opt-in a day, some days zero, some days two. All right, now let's get back to the list here. The next thing that I did is I started to collect these email addresses from these people accessing our eBooks, and now I need to do something with these email addresses and these leads. So then I went to MailChimp and I created an email drip campaign. And let me actually show you under the hood a little bit at MailChimp. So this is MailChimp, and this is my email drip series for my eBooks. So if you opt in through our website and enter your email address, you'll get this email with here are some eBooks. And then a couple of days later, you're gonna get this email with a video. And then, so these are all emails that go out and they're every two days. Then they, I think they go to every three days and then once a week, but these emails will go out. And so you can see here, each email has like about 30 to a hundred people in the queue waiting to get that next email. So I'm really happy with MailChimp, but, but this is what I set up. Once I started to have those email addresses, then I had to start to communicate to them. And I used an email drip campaign on MailChimp. All right. Now I told you that I had this opt-in form on every page. It was a little image on the right side banner and, and that it was doing okay. Probably wasn't doing what I thought it would do. So then I implemented a tool called pop-up domination. And this is one of the most helpful things that I implemented along the way, which is basically a pop-up that pops up when someone is leaving our website. And I started to think about this for a very long time on the world of the internet. There have been pop-up, you know, opt-in forms. But at the time that I found pop-up domination, most of the pop-ups that I would experience would pop up right when I entered a website. And I always thought that was horrible because I just land out a website. I don't really know where I'm at. I don't know how valuable the information is. And then a pop-up is asking me something and I usually just close it. And then one day I was on a website and then I'm, I'm looking at the website, I'm getting information, and then I'm about to leave and go somewhere else. And my mouse cursor goes to the back button or the address bar to leave. And then a pop-up pops up at that particular time. And I thought, that's great. That's the perfect way to do a pop-up is pop up when they're about to leave and let them look around before you hit them up. And so I did a Google search on pop-up when leaving or something, and it took me to pop-up domination. And I've been using this pop-up for, I don't know, four or five years now. And so this is an image here. This is basically what pops up when you go to our website and you'll see here the pop-up now promotes that ebook that I wasn't getting a lot of opt-ins for. And so the pop-up says access our ebooks and there's there's a list there of the ebooks and all they have to do is enter the email address. And then basically this the pop-up domination integrates out of the box very easily with MailChimp. And so if you put your email in here, then you automatically get into my MailChimp account and then you automatically get start getting that series of emails. And this was a game changer for me. I'll tell you right now, we probably average between 10 to 30 uh, opt-ins a day from MailChimp. And so real quickly, I went from one a day on average to let's call it 20 a day on average uh, opt-ins. So my list started growing tremendously and that's one of the most helpful things. So check out Pop-Up Domination. I'm not affiliated with the company in any way. All right, so number six on the list, we're moving right along here, is I started doing webinars. At this point, my MailChimp list started growing. And I, I thought, well, okay, now I can basically send an email to these people and get them to attend some sort of event training session for me. So it was uh, real easy to take I had started creating all this content in the form of blog posts, and it was real easy to turn that content into an hour long summary of the different tips. So if I created 20 different blog posts on how to create a cold call script, it was real easy for me to take all that and turn it into some sort of training talk for you know 50 minutes 
And I would then shoot that out as an invite to all the people that, that had come to my website and opted into my email list. So we started doing webinars. Now, on average, probably I would get about 100 to 300 registrations for my webinars. And then about a third of those would show up. So between 30 to 100 people would show up for a webinar. Now, that leads me to the last tip here, which is YouTube, because what I would do is I would record those webinars and then I would upload them to YouTube. And so you can actually go to YouTube to actually watch all of the different webinars we've done. This is a playlist on our YouTube channel. And you can see here, there's 87 different videos on this playlist of webinar recordings. So over the years, I've done 87 different webinars. Actually, I've done more than that because there are some in here that I've left off either due to quality or due to redundancy. But this has become an active area for me to post content. And YouTube has started to do what Google did in the beginning, which is they've started to see us as a subject matter expert related to particular keywords. And YouTube has started to send us traffic. So this is actually a chart of the views on my YouTube channel all the way back to the beginning of our YouTube channel, which I started in 2011. And so as you can see, by no means is my YouTube strategy good, good or correct. But at the time I'm recording this, I have like 16,800 YouTube subscribers, almost to 17,000. That's a fairly small number to big gurus and big YouTubers. But for me, in terms of generating leads for my business, it's pretty healthy. I'll tell you, when someone signs up, a lot of our customers we never talk to, they end up coming to our website through Google or YouTube and they sign up and we never talk to them. But when I do end up talking to them, they a lot of them say, well, I've been watching a lot of your YouTube videos and they know a lot about us. So from a lead generation standpoint, it's been great. It would be incredible if our numbers got to be on YouTube, got to be similar to other gurus. But the point is, is that the, all of our content creation has driven us to create content on YouTube and YouTube has become a lead generator for us too. And now YouTube basically brings new people to us. And those are people that haven't been to our website. And then in our YouTube videos and from our descriptions on YouTube, we direct those people back to our, our website where they then get the pop-up domination uh, pop-up and then they give us their email address and then they start getting emails from us through MailChimp. So all seven of these different things feed each other and it becomes a sick like a circular feedback loop where one is increasing the other and it creates a lot of synergy. And so what does that all mean? Well, at the time recording this, here is my opt-in email list on MailChimp, which it is 27,122. And now you'll note that when I, the title of this is how I created a list of 50,000. There have been 50,000 people that, that have opted into this email list. I delete people very regularly that aren't clicking on any links. The reason why is MailChimp charges according to how many email addresses you have. So you can see here, according to a star ranking system, contacts that don't click or open your emails. So I go in here very regularly and delete low quality contacts. And I've deleted probably around 20,000 contacts and, and then many others have unsubscribed as well along the way. So, but the list today has 27,000 active subscribed contacts. And those are contacts that have opted in. So it's a very healthy list. And it's much better to have an opt-in list that you can market to and send emails to versus some list that you buy or you take people that added you as a connection on LinkedIn and then you add them to your email list. By having an opt-in list, there's an agreement between you and the other person that they've agreed to receive your emails and receive your messages and communication. So it's very healthy. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today. Hopefully in those seven areas, you've gotten an idea, a nugget, something that you can improve in your business. Maybe it's the pop-up domination. Maybe it's the creating content or creating more targeted keywords or whatnot. But if you got a tip here today and you want to return the favor, uh, very easy for you to do. If you simply like, comment, share this video, subscribe to our channel, any or all of those help us tremendously and none of them cost you anything. If you do like this content and you want more or you want to stay in contact with us, you might want to follow us on any or all of these social platforms. We post basically daily sales tips on these every morning in the form of a 30 to 60 second video, which are usually taken from these long videos here. 
that we are putting on YouTube. So uh, it's a great way to stay connected with us and get sort of bite-sized sales tips for the day. If you like some of the stuff we've talked about in other training videos, that is all part of what we provide as the smart sales system. The smart sales system, basically smart stands for sales messaging and response tactics. So we try to help get salespeople to sell more by improving what they say and that a salesperson's words are their best sales tool. And by improving their message and what they say, not only can we make them appear to be a smarter salesperson, but we can actually make them smarter in terms of the decisions they make and, and how they communicate and what they do. Now we call it a system because it's actually a three level system that you can go through to implement. This isn't just a bunch of sales tips that you know we shoot you with a fire hose and you have to try to figure out how to do it. No, we take you step by step through uh, setup processes and implementation processes. And level one is basically to build your sales message. This is organizing all your thoughts of what you should be saying and communicating. And then level two, we take you through a process to organize all of those thoughts into sales scripts and emails and voicemails and objection responses. And then level three is basically how to put all that together in terms of execution. So we give you sales scripts, but how to cold call, how to get around objections, how to close. And so that's level three. If that's interesting to you, the great news is, is that you can implement all of that for free because it's all on YouTube, individual videos. There's actually a playlist on YouTube called the Smart Sales System. And so you can check that out. The, we give that away for free because the upgrade path there is to implement Sales Scripter, which is a software application that aligns with those three levels. For example, level one is to create your sales message. There's an area of Sales Scripter called the Sales Message Builder. Area number two is a is to create sales scripts. There's an area of Sales Scripter called the Sales Playbook that is a library of scripts and emails and objection responses and voicemail messages. And then level three, Sales Scripter can help you with executing from a cold calling, emailing, objection handling standpoint. Now, if you want more help beyond that, you can certainly buy consulting hours with me. I basically sell hours of my time and can help you to create your sales message or create your sales scripts or help you with execution. If that's interesting, but you still don't know what direction to go, you can purchase our book called The Smart Sales System. It is on Amazon. It aligns with those three levels, takes you through those three levels. It aligns with our smart sales system playlist on YouTube. Each chapter in the book has a video on YouTube. So the, the nice thing about having the book is you can have something you can highlight and dog ear up different pages and chapters and have on your desk when you're selling. That's pretty much it. If any of that is interesting to you and you want to learn more, find out more information, either get more tips or learn more about Sales Scripter. Just go to salescripter.com. You can get those eBooks that I mentioned to you and uh, you can actually contact us there as well. Uh, there's a chat window or the uh, email address in the top to contact us. Thanks, hope this video was helpful. Have a great day. Take care, see you on the next one, bye.